A company called Ictio spent three years figuring out how to transform leftover fish skins into durable leather. And now, brands are turning this marine leather into wallets, watch straps, and other products that don't smell like fish. I don't have to be used to the smell uh, because we fixed this issue very early. The hides of cows raised for beef are often used for leather. And people today eat about three times as much seafood as they did 50 years ago. So why can't we do the same with the more than 50 million metric tons of fish produced globally each year? We visited France to see how one company is making luxury goods from worldwide waste. Ictios gets most of its fish from local sushi restaurants. The only rule for Ictios is that the fish needs to be eaten. If it's not eaten, we do not transform it. So we'll never collect hides coming from a special raising of animals for the hides. In a typical week, this restaurant creates up to 60 fish skins. And it used to throw them all away. They go directly to the bin. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have no other solution than classic rubbish collection. Now it saves them in the freezer until Ictios does its weekly pickup. At the production facility, the first step is removing any leftover flesh from the defrosted skins. Ictios gives these scraps to another company that composts them into fertilizer. The team sorts the skins by size and refreezes them, then drops the frozen blocks in this rotating drum. Tossing the skins around removes most of the scales, while water and chemicals clean them. So it's a bit like soaps that we use to get all the fat out of the skin. That part is key because the fats are what make the fish skin smell fishy. Early samples of the fish leather skipped this step and people noticed. The answer was like, whoa, it's crazy, it's so beautiful, it's uh, very interesting, but it's a bit smelly. The skin spin through the drum again, this time with tannins that will strengthen them and help color stick. These tannins come from vegetables. Many sources of vegetable contain polyphenol, which has the ability to transform a hide into a leather. Vegetable tanning actually goes back thousands of years, but more dangerous chemical methods became dominant over the 20th century. The team flattens out the skins. Then they drape them on a rack and wait for the tannins to soak in. Le but étant que plus un cuir met du temps à sécher, Meilleur sera la souplesse. Once air dried, the skins go through this machine, which weakens fibers so the leather will be softer. Now it's time to add color. Workers soak the skins in the first round of dyeing, then lay them flat again and begin another series of drying steps. Then they stretch them by pinning them to metal plates for about a day. We stretch it as far as we can so that we can have the maximum surface on the leather. At this point, it feels like a thinner version of traditional leather. It's a little bit like snake leather when you look at the, the grain, the aesthetic. The leather can now be sprayed with dye for its final shade and a finishing coat. You can finish the leather by applying several dyes and resin on the leather so it will bring protection and a brightness to the leather. The spray also contains natural oils that help smooth out the surface. Dans un premier temps, du noir brillant, qui est vraiment un grand classique de ce qu'on propose, qui est le cuir aujourd'hui le plus demandé. This is the final product. The marine leathers are today a little bit more expensive than the classic leathers, but cheaper than the exotic leathers like snakes, like crocodile or others. Clients can request custom colors, like this trout leather covered in actual gold. Entièrement d'or, de l'or 22 carats. Aujourd'hui, il n'y a pas de limite, et pourquoi pas, voilà, un cuir en or. The company sells some leather at a discount if it has any flaws. Effectivement, on trouve des défauts comme ça, qui sont des défauts de peau directement sur l'animal, des choses qu'on ne contrôle pas. The founders say marine leather can be used for just about everything regular leather is bags, shoes, wallets, but also sometimes for some design products. Like you can already think about the inside of a yacht of, or a restaurant. The tricky part is the size. You will never get a salmon as big as a cow. It's a good news, I think. 
Benjamin says it takes five salmon skins to make this bag. The company also makes leather from sturgeon, trout, and carp. And it's working on figuring out catfish, which have no scales. And today we are developing each year a new leather, and each year we are failing and developing new solutions for new skins, for new leathers, and for creativity. So. A lot of the processes at Ictios are similar to what a traditional tannery would do to cow hides. So is it any better for the planet to make leather from fish instead? Well, the main problem with cow leather is that the chemicals often used to tan it are highly toxic. Most tanneries use chromium to strengthen hides into leather. It's a heavy metal that can contaminate groundwater and make people sick. The vegetable tannins Ictios uses replace that toxic ingredient. And those soapy chemicals that clean the skins? The company says it can treat and use them over and over. So we have no waste after this part. But dyes can also have an impact. About 2% of industrial dye ends up in waterways, which can sicken both animals and humans. Ictios uses a mixture of synthetic dyes and natural ones made from vegetables. Benjamin says they can't only use natural dyes because the color fades after six months. There is an equilibrium to find between the impact of the process and the lifetime of the product. The company sends wastewater from the dyeing process to a nearby treatment plant. But the founders say the main benefit is keeping the fish out of the trash and out of landfills, where they would create methane as they broke down. The fact that fish skin is today a waste, this is more ecological. We already saved 20 tons of fish skins. There's still a long way to go. France alone tosses more than 200,000 metric tons of fish skins every year. So the founders hope to scale up. And in the meantime, they want to inspire other businesses to put some skin in the game. Waste are a new way to find raw materials. It's not an ugly way. It's not a smelly way. It's a senseful sourcing. Hi, this is Will Story from the World Wide Waste team. Over the past year, we've looked at bricks made out of plastic in Kenya, tiles made out of smog in India, and mats made out of human hair used to clean up oil spills in San Francisco. We want to bring you more stories that take a look at garbage and creative ways people deal with it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. We also read all the comments. If you have an idea for a video you'd like to see, let us know.